welcome to this video in this video we are going to talk about reliability and how to model it we will use probability and uh, particularly we will use some distributions including uh, Poisson distribution exponential binomial and others we will also consider systems in which some of the components work as backup to others or maybe the complexity of the system makes it uh, more risky due to the fact that we have several components in the system. So we're going to see how the interaction between the architecture of the system works either to promote or reduce the reliability as a system as a whole. The distributions that we will need to understand and consider are the binomial distribution, the Poisson distribution, the exponential distribution, and the Weibull distribution. If you are not familiar with them, please review the other videos associated with the description of these uh, probability distributions. In order to have a better understanding of the behavior of the system in terms of the reliability, we need to acknowledge that at the beginning, many systems and uh, in their implementation go through phases. And the first phase is a debugging phase. In this debugging phase, the failure rate drops. The failure rate is understood as a number of failures expected per unit of time and by the failure rate dropping it means that the mean time between failures or the mean time until the next failure is increasing and this happens as we learn about the issues uh, on the system and we uh, are able to solve them eventually it comes to a steady state uh, a situation with a failure rate in which it is not increasing and it is not decreasing anymore we st still have some potential failures that happen due to random the, ran the natural variations and the natural randomness associated with the system and then after a while uh, that that's usually most of the life of the uh, the useful life of the system and then after a while um, we see that the system may begin to decay due to the uh, being worn out uh, after this time that the system has been used and when that happens the number of failures begin to increase and that usually justifies um, a replacement or an improvement on technology um, from the reliability perspective it means that the failure rate increases the exponential distribution in reliability is very commonly used because it can be uh, used in the phase when the failure rate is constant the probability density function of the exponential distribution is lambda e to the minus lambda t and uh, um, the cumulative density function is 1 minus e to the minus lambda t and um, that would be the probability of finding a failure lambda would be the number of uh, uh, the rate the failure rate that is the number of failures per unit of time and um, the, the f the capital f function is the probability of finding one failure Therefore, the, the probability of not finding any would be 1 minus f, and uh, that can be expressed as just e to the minus lambda t. For example, we can compute the, the reliability of a system at 1000 hours if the uh, at 1000, 2000, or 3000 hours if the mean time to failure is 1000. And uh, by doing the um, uh, computations, we have e to the negative 
1,000 over 1,000 is equal to 0 0.36787 for the case when we have 1,000 hours for 2,000 hours the computation is negative 1,000 negative 2,000 over 1,000 and that is 0 0.13533 and the reliability after three hours e to the negative 3,000 over 1,000 and that is uh, 0 0.049478. The interpretation of these probabilities is that the, the lower the value, the less likely the chance that the uh, system will still be operational. In this case, the mean time to failure is 1,000 hours, and that translates into the lambda being 1 over 1,000. That is, we would expect to have one failure in 1,000 hours. That is, uh, however, a, a parameter of the exponential distribution, and the actual failure may happen earlier or later. When we have more than one component, we can integrate the behavior of these systems depending on the nature of how these components uh, perform and are part of the system. For instance, when we have a series of uh, uh, elements in series or components in series, what we have is that all of them have to be present. Otherwise, if you, if you would like to understand this as a signal that travels from left to right, the signal will be interrupted in case of one of the components is not working properly. So we need all of them to be working properly and the risk becomes larger. Alternatively, we have the opportunity to, to work in parallel with parallel components and when they have co parallel components, the system uh, has more than one way to send the signal to the other side and that facilitates or increases the, the probability of making it through the system. So if one of the components or even two of the components may be down, you still may have another another one to be working on. For the cases in which we work in parallel, we have three types of um, behavior. One is the concurrent behavior in which all of them are working at the same time, and the failure could happen in any one of them. We have the case of a binomial performance and uh, the concurrent is just uh, a special case of the binomial. What happens in the binomial is that you need at least so many out of the total that you have. Let's say that you have five components in parallel and you need three. It doesn't matter which one of the three. So you can compute that as a binomial distribution for finding what is the probability of having three out of all the five at least right it, it will work if you still have four or all the five working but we compute uh, binomial distribution to figure out figure that out the case of the concurrent is just the case in which the number that you need is one and uh, there is yet another one for the parallel conditions in the parallel conditions mm -hmm. uh, we can have the opportunity to have a system in standby meaning that only one is operating at a time and the others are waiting in case they are needed. This increases the probability of success or, or increases the reliability because the time to failure will not start in the component that is being waiting. And uh, therefore, that is a very robust way of building systems that require reliability. In the case of the concurrent, there are, due to the formulations that we have, um, there are some cases in which uh, it's easier to compute the parameters and the performance measures, like the mean time to failure or not. And um, when that's the case, um, if we have the same mean time to failure in all the parallel components, we can compute uh, additional performance measures that we not easily can obtain when the mean time to failure is not the same.
Finally, uh, in the relativity block diagrams, we can have a combination of parallel and uh, series components. And uh, what we do is we go integrating the solutions for these uh, systems as they go along in such a way that, uh, for instance, in the diagram that we have here, we would solve for the parallel and that would be integrated as if it was one more, the first one of the ones in the series. So um, that's what we would do with any kind of combination of uh, series and parallel components. Specifically, when we have uh, components in series, what we make the assumption is that the probability of them failing is independent. So the only way for us to have them working as a system is if none of them fail. So we would have to have the reliability of the first component and the reliability of the second component, etc. That is a multiplication of all the corresponding reliabilities as the reliability of the system because it's a joint distribution for when all the elements are uh, operational. So going into the details using exponential distribution, we realize that what we have to do is we need to add up all the exponents and the exponents are essentially the, uh, the summation of all the lambdas, the, all the, the failure rates and um, the the time that uh, for which we're drawing the study remains the same. In this case, we can generalize and the mean time to failure is one over the summation of the lambdas. Create an example to solve this. This is similar to what you have in your reading notes. We have uh, two components that are needed to operate a circuit. The components have a mean time to fill over 1500 hours for the first, uh, for the first component and 2600 hours for the second component. The question is compute the mean time to failure of the system and the reliability of the system after 3250 hours of operation. Compute the probability that the system has failed in uh, 3,250 hours. Well, the computation, we just use the formula that we previously described, is this one over the summation of the lambdas, that is um, one over one over 1,500 plus one over 2,600. Those are the corresponding um, lambda values and by doing the algebra, we obtain 951.22 hours. Notice that the, that the mean time to failure have reduced from uh, 1500 and 2600 as a system is only 951 because now either one or the other could fail and with one of them failing, the whole system fails. So the mean time to failure has reduced. Also, we can compute the reliability of the system. And the reliability of the system is the joint probability of the reliability of each one of the components because they are in series and we need them both to be working. We use the exponential formula for that. And um, the number that we obtain is 3.28% and that obeys to the fact that the mean time to failure of com combined is 951 hours and if we are interested in the, in the failure at 3250 which is well beyond the 951 hours that means that we have very little chance that the system still working properly so the numbers are consistent the probability of failure is the is the complement of this probability one minus the probability of um, the the system working properly is the probability of the system failing with the purpose of keeping this video short and to the point 
I will cut it here and we will keep our explanation on reliability on a second video.